Hi, I'm Andrew Talkov, Senior Director of Curatorial Affairs at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture, and welcome to Curators at Home, a series where we uncover the real stories and real people behind Virginia's history. The museum may be closed for now, but we're still here for you to enrich your life by preserving and sharing the story of Virginia. If you haven't already seen what we have to offer in our online offerings, you should go to virginiahistory.org backslash at home to enjoy a curated selection of free digital resources, including podcasts, webinars, virtual tours, and hundreds of hours of recorded lectures. Now, none of the work that we do would be possible without the generous support of our members. The Virginia Museum of History and Culture doesn't receive state operating support, and it's through private donations that we're able to preserve and share Virginia's story and offer programs like this. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section, and I'll be sure to respond uh, in the coming days. And now on to today's program, Virginia on Film. Now, I know you've, a lot of you have been thinking about film, uh, as we've all, or many of us, have been asked to stay at home in order to curb the spread of COVID-19, it's no surprise that Virginians and people across the country are looking at ways to find entertainment, and streaming services have seen a major increase in subscribers. So if you've already watched Tiger King and have exhausted your backlog of movies that you'd always wanted to watch, uh, but didn't have the time. Uh, I thought that we might be able to find some new inspiration by looking at some movies uh, with stories that have been told about Virginia or films that have used Virginia as a backdrop for storytelling. So as I was preparing for this program, uh, and looking through the VMHC collection, uh, one of the first film-related images that I saw was the image uh, of a poster for the movie Vir The Virginian. Uh, the poster on the left is uh, the movie poster for the 1929 production of The Virginian. Now, The Virginian is based on a 1902 novel by the same name by Owen Wister, um, it had been adapted to a theatrical performance and then to a, a movie. Uh, the Virginian is a Western. It tells the story of a ranch foreman at Box H Ranch near Medicine Bow, Wyoming, known only as the Virginian. Throughout the story, he vies for the attention and love of the new school teacher, Molly Wood, and combats his nemesis known as Trampus, who, at the end of the film, he kills in a gunfight on his wedding day to Molly. The film has been, been remade several times. Uh, Cecil B. DeMille directed a silent version of the uh, production in 1914. The Gary Cooper film was his first talkie, which had become uh, popular in the 1920s. And uh, that film was filmed largely outdoors in California. Uh, the remake of The Virginian in Technicolor on the right uh, starred Joel McRae, Brian Dunleavy, and Barbara Britton. Uh, that film was produced in 1946 and again, mostly filmed in California. Um, perhaps the most memorable version of The Virginian is the television version. It was the first of America's 90-minute Westerns, and it aired for 11 years. Here's an image of the main cast of The Virginian in the fall of 1964. Now, James Drury, who's at the far right of this image, played the title character in the pilot episode. The Virginian wears a Confederate hat and a Confederate belt buckle, which suggests uh, a link to the American Civil War but by the time the first actual episode of the series aired, uh, those ties had been eliminated. So the Virginian has a long history. 
more than a century old. Um, but other than the mysterious moniker that is never explained, the story actually has little to do with Virginia or Virginia history, perhaps with the exception that they use Virginia gentlemanliness uh, as, uh, as a connection to this character. So moving into the 1940s, um, Tidewater, Virginia was, uh, was all excited by the arrival of Cary Grant uh, and the cast and crew of the Howards of Virginia. Uh, this movie uh, starred Cary Grant as Matt Howard and Martha Scott as his wife, Jane Peyton Howard. Um, the story is, uh, as a young man, Matt Howard uh, loses his father during General Braddock's 1755 expedition against the French in the Ohio Valley, um, but with the promise uh, that he would inherit a thousand acres of land that his father would be given for serving. As an adult, Matt Howard becomes an accomplished backwoodsman and decides to settle uh, in what ultimately is the Shenandoah Valley, but not before he's introduced by none other than Thomas Jefferson to the snobbish royalist Fleetwood Peyton and his beautiful sister Jane uh, in and around Williamsburg. So Matt purchases a thousand acre farm in Albemarle County, establishes a successful farm, and returns to Williamsburg to propose to Jane Peyton. She's attracted by his Republican spirit, and much to the surprise of her brother, she agrees to marry him and they strike out for Albemarle County. Matt's elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses, feuds with his loyalist brother-in-law, and is exposed to anti-British ideas for the first time. When the revolution begins, he spends more time away from his Albemarle home, much to the dismay of Jane, who follows him with her two children uh, back to Williamsburg. Matt con is confronted by her and doesn't want him to leave, but the revolution calls and he's off to Philadelphia to join in the fight for independence. He joins the Continental Army, as do his two sons, and later returns to Tidewater, where he sees the poor condition of his royalist uh, brother-in-law, uh, Fleetwood, and comes to terms with how he mistreated his uh, slightly disabled son who had a clubbed foot and reconciles with, with his wife. The movie, uh, interestingly enough, as you can see from the right, was filmed primarily at the newly restored Colonial Williamsburg. And the restored Capitol and Raleigh Tavern, which is shown here, and the governor's palace are prominently featured in this film. So jumping forward, um, not only in history a few centuries, um, but a few decades in film is, uh, is Misty. So for those of you who want to enjoy an iconic Virginia story or share it with younger people in your life, um, this 1961 film uh, uh, might be of interest to you. Uh, of course, it's based on the 1947 children's book, Misty of Chincoteague, Chincoteague by Marguerite Henry. And the plot revolves around the annual Pony Swim, which is an event held in the Chincoteague area each year, which involves rounding up some of the wild ponies who live on Assateague Island to swim them across the channel. Some of the colts and yearlings are sold at auction each year as a way to thin out the herd and as a benefit to the local Chincoteague Volunteer Fire Department. Uh, in fact, this year's pony swim was scheduled for July 29th. And as of this airing, uh, I haven't seen any notes of cancellation. The story features actually two real life characters of Chincoteague, Paul and Maureen Beebe, a young brother and sister who moved from Philadelphia to Chincoteague, Virginia, to live with Grandpa Beebe and Grandma Beebe after their parents pass away. 
Paul and Maureen befriend an elusive mayor on Assateague named the Phantom and later come to own her full Misty. Now, Misty was actually filmed in its entirety in Chincoteague at a home on Folly Creek near the town of Accomac. And the film only included six professional actors. All of the other characters in this movie were played by local residents. And at the premiere showing of the movie on Chincoteague in 1961, the real Misty was led down Main Street and her footprints, which you can see here on the right, were impressed into cement in front of the Island Theater where they have remained. Um, the theater has also been restored. Uh, Misty died in 1972, but you can see her taxidermied body at the Beebe Ranch Museum. Another film featuring a Virginia story, although not filmed in Virginia, is Walt Disney's Remember the Titans, starring Denzel Washington as a new African-American coach at Alexandria, Virginia's T.C. Williams High School. The character he portrays is Herman Boone. And as the story goes, uh, as told in the film, uh, Denzel Washington actually replaces the popular and successful Bill Yost, who's played by Will Patton, Pat Patton um, as the school system tries to desegregate um, and reduce rising tensions. Um, the tension in the film is largely created um, by the fact that uh, Boone uh, replaces Yost, um, but the two come together to unify and integrate the high school football team. And, you know, threatened by a prejudiced school board member that if he loses a single game in the season, he'll be fired. Uh, Boone and the Titans go on to, to win every game that season. Um, although the story is, is based on a true story, um, the Alexandria public school system had already been integrated in 1965. The story takes place during the 1971 season. And really, all of the schools that they played that season had also been integrated. But the message here is clear. It's a message of, uh, you know, Virginia's hard road toward desegregation, uh, our country's hard road toward the desegregation of schools and the long road in the South, including Virginia. Um, the film is very uplifting. The performances are well worth watching. Um, but it was a story of Virginia, but not told as with Virginia as a background, as most of the film uh, was made in Georgia. Now, I don't think that we can talk about movies made about Virginia stories without the retelling of the story of Pocahontas. Uh, in the collection of the Virginia Museum of History and Culture is a large poster, um, as you can see at left, uh, for the film Captain John Smith and Pocahontas. Uh, the movie starred Anthony Dexter as Captain John Smith and Jody Lawrence as Pocahontas. Um, in recent, it's generally been classified as a B movie, and in recent years, it's taken on sort of a cult following. Most of the movie, though, was filmed in the Blue Ridge Mountains, although some of the exteriors were shot in Bronson Canyon in Los Angeles, which looks very little like Virginia. And in fact, you can see the Hollywood sign at the far right. Um, this was also, interestingly enough, a filming location for the television show, The Virginian. And as is typical in Hollywood retellings of the Pocahontas story, Jodie Lawrence portrays a Pocahontas that's far older than the 10 or 11 year old that John Smith encountered in the early 1600s. And also in uh, unfortunately typical style, particularly for 1953, the native Virginians are depicted more like Western Plains Indians and played uh, entirely by white actors. Of course, in 1995, Disney 
uh, entered the Pocahontas uh, story. And it's hard to believe that it's been 25 years since the release of Disney's Pocahontas. And, you know, historians will um, agree that it represents an ahistorical version of the relationship between John Smith and Pocahontas, but it did represent a major step forward for Disney in that they this was the first uh, female lead Disney characters that portrayed a woman of color. But again, Pocahontas is portrayed as a young adult as opposed to the 10-year-old girl um, that she was. And of course, historically, there, there's no recorded romantic relationship between John Smith and Pocahontas. Uh, interestingly, enough, interestingly enough, at the end of this film, uh, Governor Radcliffe, uh, one of the uh, main protagonists, was sent back to England to answer for his wounding of Smith as Smith attempts to prevent him from killing uh, Chief Powhatan. The real ending of that story is far more gruesome. When Radcliffe and 14 fellow colonists were killed by the Powhatans in 1609, after being invited to a gathering where the colonists believed that they would receive corn. This came after a series of conflicts between the native people and the Virginia colonists. Radcliffe was actually tied to a stake in front of a fire Women removed the skin from his entire body with muscle shells, shells and tossed the pieces into the flames as he watched. They skinned his face last and finally burned him at the stake, which is an ending that I'm sure Disney did not think was appropriate for their target audience. But like many films, Disney's Pocahontas offers an opportunity to spark an interest that will hopefully encourage viewers to learn more. And of course, in 2005, it appeared that the film industry's interest in Pocahontas and John Smith didn't ebb as the 400th anniversary of the landing of the English at Jamestown arrived, but so too didn't their efforts to tell a more historical narrative. The 2005 film, The New World, was written and directed by Terrence Malick and starred Colin Farrell as John Smith and Corianka Kilcher a German-born American-Peruvian actress as Pocahontas. Malik did get closer to showing a historically age-appropriate Pocahontas since Kilcher was 14 years old when she portrayed the character. But the film, as you can see by the poster uh, on the left, uh, suggests that Smith fell in love with Pocahontas during her quote-unquote rescue of him uh, during his capture with the Powhatans. Of course, this film was produced in Virginia and its coastal areas provided beautiful backgrounds for the film, which was shot in the summer and early fall of 2004. The crew films at First Landing State Park along the Colonial Parkway between Jamestown and Yorktown. They used, as you can see here on the left, the recreated ships from Jamestown settlement and filmed along the James at Berkeley Plantation. Now, Richmond and Fredericksburg and Petersburg and many, many residents of Central Virginia were buzzing when the award-winning director Steven Spielberg and award-winning actors Daniel Day-Lewis and Sally Field came to Central Virginia to film Lincoln in 2011. Set during the final months of the American Civil War, the film, which is based in part on Doris Kern Goodwin's amazing book, A Team of Rivals, follows Lincoln's efforts to achieve the passage of the 13th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution, which would ban slavery. And it's a race against time as an end to the conflict would also mean an end to the debate in the passage of the 13th Amendment. Much of the film takes place in Washington, D.C., but the film was almost entirely shot in Virginia, with the exterior of the Capitol being transformed into the White House, as you can see here, and the interior used as the halls of Congress. Petersburg's octagonal city market, whoops, uh, and the streets of old time Petersburg can also be seen in many scenes. Soon after the filming, the museum began collecting objects associated with the experience of Virginians in the making of the film. 
One object that came into the collection courtesy of makeup artist Shelley Ilmensi was a makeup kit that was used on the set. 2016 was a major year for films about African-American history in Virginia. One of the early installments was the movie Loving, uh, which tells the story of Richard and Mildred Loving, the interracial couple who were married in 1958 in Washington, D.C., but because of Virginia's anti-miscegenation laws, were later arrested and jailed when they returned to Caroline County. The Supreme landmark Supreme Court case Loving v. Virginia uh, in 1967 struck down bans on interracial marriage, and the film, which featured Joel Egerton as Richard Loving and Ruth Nega, who was nominated for an Academy Award, um, was a really delightful uh, installment. The entirety of this film was shot in Virginia uh, in Bowling Green, where you can see the courthouse here, the actual courthouse where their early court cases took place, um, as well as in Petersburg and Churchill and Richmond, and even in front of the Virginia Museum of History and Culture, where, you're, where you'll notice uh, the Boulevard sidewalk, which became the sidewalk to the US Supreme Court. Other installments in 2016 included Birth of a Nation, which uses the title, of course, of the 1915 silent film by D.W. Griffith that portrayed the rise of the Ku Klux Klan in the post-Civil War South. The film about Nat Turner's 1831 revolt of enslaved people in Southampton County was co-written and co-produced and starred uh, Norfolk native Nate Parker as Nat Turner. Um, the film chronicles Turner's rise to leadership of uh, a revolt of enslaved people in Southampton, which led to the death of 60 white men, women, and children, as well as the slayings of hundreds of uh, enslaved African Americans in the aftermath. Uh, Turner said that, uh, Parker rather, said that this country was built on rebellion. So when we talk about American heroes, people that fought against an oppressive force, I think that is a no brainer that Nat Turner exists in the conversation. Although the film's uh, story takes place in Virginia, the film was filmed in uh, Georgia. And in 2016, we also saw the film Hidden Figures, which is based on the 2016 book by Hampton native Margot Lee Shetterly. The award-winning film about Catherine Goebel, Mary Jackson, and Dorothy Vaughn, who were some of NASA's human computers in the 1960s um, at the segregated Hampton uh, Langley Research Center, um, was a remarkable film um, that certainly should be revisited um, and put back on your playlist. That film also was shot in Atlanta, and uh, although it tells a Virginia story. From 2000, now television has also turned to Virginia. Um, this isn't necessarily a Virginia story, but uh, it does include Virginians, particularly George Washington. Um, but the series Turn, Washington Spies, which filmed in Virginia from 2014 to 2017, based on Alexander Rose's book of a similar title. Um, the series follows events from 1776 to 1781 and features a farmer shown here from Long Island, New York, and his friends as they form a group of spies called the Culper Ring, um, which was very influential in the revolution. The series was filmed at Tuckahoe Plantation, as you can see on the right, as well as at Patrick Henry's Scotchtown, on the streets of Yorktown and Colonial Williamsburg, um, as well as at Westover Plantation on the left. In 2019, the, uh, really 2018, the cast and crew from Harriet came to Central Virginia to produce a biopic about Harriet Tubman. The movie starred Cynthia Erivo and Leslie Odom Jr. 
and was filmed entirely on location in Virginia. It's the first film to tell the story of Harriet Tubman, the famous conductor on the Underground Railroad, who led more than 300 people from slavery to freedom. And it's also worth noting that even though, um, even though historical films have uh, uh, taken a look at Virginia. Uh, even fictional stories include Virginia as their settings. AMC really likes filming in Virginia. And so it's ironic that in season five of The Walking Dead, which is a series about survivors of a zombie apocalypse, the survivors actually travel to Virginia and settle in a walled portion of Alexandria. Now, even though that part of their story is filmed outside of Atlanta. Um, a new Walking Dead spinoff series called Monument was filmed in the Richmond area in 2019. And here on the left is an image from the Hopewell, Virginia shoot showing a downed airplane in the middle of a Hopewell street. So I understand that um, many of our friends and those who work in the film industry have been particularly hard hit during the COVID-19 crisis. And all of us here at the Virginia Museum of History and Culture want to thank you for the work you've done to keep us entertained while we stay at home and are looking forward to supporting the work you do uh, when all of this has passed. So I hope you've enjoyed today's program. Tell us your stories about an experience you had seeing uh, movies about Virginia or movies being made in Virginia or about your favorite movie about Virginia history. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section and we'll post a response. So be sure to tune into our Facebook or YouTube page next Friday, May 15th at noon for our next installment of Curators at Home when you can join Dr. Karen Sherry, museum collections curator, as she looks at period images from the women's suffrage movement and explores what they can tell us about historical attitudes towards women and their role in American civic life in a program entitled Moral, Maternal, Mannish, and Monstrous, Suffraged Images, 1900 to 1920. Until then, thanks again for watching and be safe.